rice rice and rice once again what's up 23 percent nation this is your man coach d ladies and gentlemen today i want to welcome you to whole grain of the day the one and only wild rice now yes i know i said rice 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 but we're not talking about white rice. We're not talking about brown rice. We're not even talking about tamed rice. Today, it's all about being wild. <laughs> That's right, guys. So please listen on. Why? Because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of wild rice. All right. First up, just a little bit of background information. Wild rice is a semi-aquatic grass that grows in water, such as lakes, rivers, and bays between two and four feet deep. Interesting. Also, wild rice originated in the upper Great Lakes of the United States and Canada and is one of the two most common grains native to North America, while the other is corn. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, wild rice and corn are the two grains that are native to the United States of America. Who knew? All right, now it's time to dive into a few fun facts. When cooked, wild rice actually expands to three to four times its original size. So what that simply means is that you may not have to cook as much of it as you thought. Also, wild rice is Minnesota's official state grain. Hmm. So I guess the next time I'm in Minnesota, I guess I'll have some wild rice. <laughs> also, you can pop wild rice just like you can pop popcorn. That's right. Just heat it up in a little oil and shake it until it pops. Now, for those of you who are wondering what in the world does popped wild rice look like? Well, just take a look at the picture. Voila. Also, remember something that wild rice basically comes from a grass. That's right. And if left wild, <laughs> it can actually reach up to 12 feet tall. Now, for those of us who like the, the sport of basketball, believe it or not, a basketball hoop is 10 feet above the ground. So that means that this wild uh, grass grows higher than a basketball goal and last but not least for those of us who suffer from gluten uh sensitivities believe it or not guys wild rice is a gluten-free rice that's right and always remember if it's not wheat if it's not barley and if it's not rye well then it does not contain gluten so go ahead and eat more wild rice all right, now it's time to dive into the 520 rule, which basically is all about food. That's right, but more in particular, it's about food labels. Basically, uh, the 520 rule is a guide. That's right, it's a guide that helps you know whether or not the food you're eating is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrients. Now, when we talk about the 520 rule, specifically, we're talking about the percent daily value. That's right, guys. Abbreviated percent DV. Now, if we take a look at our sample food label, then you'll notice that percent daily value is highlighted in lavender, right? And then we also have some nutrients that are highlighted in yellow. And then we also have some that are highlighted in the light blue. Now, when we talk about the percent DV, okay, percent daily value, ultimately we're talking about a percentage, right? So is the percentage high or is the percentage low? Well, when we look at our sample food label, we can see that the nutrients that are highlighted in yellow are highlighted because those are the nutrients which unfortunately do a very good job at promoting disease. That's right, guys. When we talk about total fat, cholesterol, and sodium, when they have a higher percentage DV, then they do a good job at causing what I like to call the big four. Heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes, and let's not forget about obesity. Now, when we look at the nutrients that are highlighted in light blue, such as fiber, vitamins, and minerals, well, those nutrients do just the opposite. They do a really good job at 
<clears throat> at preventing disease and shall we say promoting health right so when we look at nutrients such as vitamins and minerals and fiber we always want to make sure that they are on the higher end of the scale meaning they have a higher percent dv now let's be a little more specific shall we when you look at the percent dv okay once again it is a percentage if the food item offers zero percent to nine percent then it is considered not a good source of that particular nutrient if it offers 10% to 19% DV, then the food item is considered to be a good source of that particular nutrient. Lastly, if the food item offers 20% DV or higher, then it is considered an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the 520 rule. Remember, it's a guide to let you know whether or not a food item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. All right, so now that we're familiar with the 520 rule, we can now dive into the nutrition facts of wild rice. <laughs> okay, now for today's lecture, we're simply going to say that a single serving of wild rice is equivalent to one cup of cooked wild rice. So, Here's what you're going to put in your body. It's going to give you about 166 calories, 35 grams of carbs, 6.5 grams of protein. Yes, 6.5 grams of protein. Very nice. Only 0 0.6 grams of fat. Now look at this, 3 grams of fiber. Very good. Now let's dive into the vitamins and minerals. Manganese comes in at 23% DV, which makes it an excellent source. Zinc comes in at 15%, making it a good source. Magnesium, 13%, good source. Phosphorus, 13% DV, good source. Then we have niacin coming in at 11% DV, so it's a good source of niacin. Then we have vitamin B6 coming in at 11% DV, good source. Next up is folate coming in at 11% DV, so yes, a single serving of wild rice is a good source of folate. Then we have copper coming in at 10% DV. Very nice. 10% means it's between 10 and 19%. So yes, it is a good source of copper. Next up, we have riboflavin coming in at only 8%. So unfortunately, wild rice or at least one cup of wild rice is not a good source of riboflavin. Then we have thiamine coming in at only 6%. Iron 5% and potassium at 5% also. So when it comes to thiamine, iron, and potassium, yes, they are on the lower end of the scale. So that makes <clears throat> uh, one cup of cooked wild rice not a good source of thiamine, iron, and potassium. All right, now it's time to dive into the health benefits. But before we do, Coach D wants to explain something. I want to very quickly talk with you about the principle of cause and effect, which basically states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There is no such thing as luck and or chance. In other words, everything happens for a reason. So what does that translate to? It simply means this, that if you want to become healthy, you have to create it or we have to cause it. Now, the same thing is true with disease. Disease doesn't just happen. You don't get lucky, <laughs> right? Or shall I say unlucky? You actually cause it. That's right. So ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be healthy, then you have to put the right stuff in right so here's what happens once you put in all those amazing nutrients that we just discussed on the previous slide number one wild rice it helps to strengthen your bones right and who doesn't need strong bones also it boosts your energy levels hey so if you're an athlete and maybe you're feeling a little sluggish a little lethargic maybe you can incorporate a little more wild rice also, it's gluten free. That's right. So if you have celiac disease or any type of gluten intolerance or gluten sensitivity, then go ahead and eat more wild rice. Also, it may help reduce birth defects. So ladies, if you're pregnant, then you may want to start eating more wild rice. Also, 
wild rice helps to protect against disease. Now, once again, we have to remember that wild rice comes from a plant, which basically means it has its own phytochemicals or more specifically phytonutrients. So the phytonutrients that are responsible for protecting us against disease would be number one, phenolic acid, and number two, synaptic acid. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a few health benefits of wild rice. All right, now it's time to talk a little more about food, but more specifically, plant foods, or we can say vegan foods. <laughs> Guys, I want to uh, introduce you to ForksOverKnives.com. It's our go-to website for everything vegan. So as usual, I went to the site, did just a little bit of research on wild rice, and look at what I found. Two amazing vegan wild rice dishes that I want to share with you right now. So the first recipe is entitled Creamy Wild Rice Soup. Take a look at the picture. It looks delicious. Our second recipe is entitled Caribbean Rice. Take a look at that picture. Looks scrumptious. Very nice. Now, here's the thing. If you are so inclined, just by simply looking at these pictures, then I want to invite you to click on the description box. Why? Well, because I'm providing you with a direct link to both of these recipes. That's right. Coach D wants you to eat more wild rice. Now, here's the thing. When you get to the website, it's going to give you a lot of information, a lot of good information at that. It'll give you the ingredient list, the instructions, and the cooking time, right? So what more do you need? So here's the thing. If you decide to make both of these dishes, or maybe just one of them, then make it, taste it, come back to the video, and let Coach G know exactly how it tastes. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, two amazing vegan wild rice dishes from ForksOverKnives.com. All right, 23% Nation, I hear you. A lot of you say, well, Coach D, I really appreciate the fun facts. Coach D, I really like the health benefits. But Coach D, what I really want to know is, when should I eat more wild rice, right? Well, 23% <laughs> Nation, don't fear coach d is here ladies and gentlemen the best day and i do mean the best day to eat more wild rice is nature day what nature day yes nature day <laughs> guys nature day is the first day of the 23 percent challenge now some of you may not know anything about the challenge and if that's you listen up the 23% Challenge is a monthly seven-day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, your relationships, and it also helps to save planet Earth. Yes, in only seven days. As a matter of fact, it happens to be the first seven days of every single month, the first all the way through the seventh. Now, being that Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, that simply means that Nature Day is the first day of every single month. So whether it's July 1st, October 1st, or even December 1st, it's always Nature Day. All right, so perhaps at this point you are intrigued about Nature Day. Maybe you wanna participate in Nature Day. Well, here's a little more information. Guys, Nature Day is all about getting closer to nature. Now, yes, there are lots of different things that you can do to get closer to nature, right? You can go swim in the ocean, you can go to a petting zoo, or you can go take a nature walk, <laughs> okay? But for the sake of the 23% challenge, Coach D wants to support you and motivate you to simply get closer to nature by eating more plants. That's right, guys. It's time to put nature inside of our bodies. Now, maybe you're thinking about transitioning to a more whole food plant-based diet, or maybe you just simply want to eat more plants, right? Well, whatever the case may be, Coach D has created, or shall I say coin, three different types of vegans that I believe can really, really help you out. The first type is a 3% vegan. Now, a 3% vegan is anyone who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only one day out of an entire month. That's right, guys, one day out of an entire month. 
So perhaps that one day could be the first day of the month, which technically is Nature Day. Now, the second type is what I like to call a 13% vegan, right? <laughs> now, a 13% vegan is anyone, man, woman, or child, who decides to eat only plant foods and drink only water only four days out of an entire month. Now, that could be the first four days of the month, or it could be one day per week, providing the month has four weeks. And then the third type is a 23% vegan. That's right, guys, a 23% vegan. Now, technically, that's what Coach D considers himself. Now, what does that translate to? Well, it simply means that for the first seven days of every single month, I am a strict vegan, meaning I only eat foods that come from the five food groups of plant foods, meaning all fruits, all vegetables and herbs, all nuts and seeds, all legumes and all whole grains. That's right. No plant foods are excluded. And I also only drink water. So no milk, no alcoholic beverages, no sodas and no Kool-Aid. <laughs> so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, just a little more information about Nature Day. All right. Now, perhaps you are motivated, you are inspired, you're excited to participate in Nature Day. Well, for those of us who are, I want to offer you just a few tips. Why? Because I want your Nature Day to be successful. So here's tip number one. Go to your local grocery store. Now, when you go to the store, I want you to only go to two places. Number one is going to be the produce section. Why? Because that's where all of your fresh plant foods are located. And number two is the grocer's freezer aisle. Why? Because that's where your frozen options are. All right. Tip number two, go to a local farmer's market. Ladies and gentlemen, there are lots of advantages to shopping at a farmer's market versus your local grocery store. For instance, the produce, meaning the plant foods, are going to be a little more fresh, right? Why? Because the food is grown locally and organically, which means less pesticides and less herbicides. Also, because it's grown locally, that means less transit time, which means less gas and fewer expenses for the farmer, which then pass that savings on to the end consumer, meaning you and I. <laughs> OK, my third tip is to check out the prepared dishes section of your local grocery store. Now, this is for people who say, I don't know how to cook plant foods. I don't have time to cook plant foods. Right. Well, let someone else do the cooking for you. So while you're in your grocery store, just walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Now, some stores may call it the kitchen, right? Just walk on over there, talk to the person behind the counter and, and let them know, hey, it's nature day and that I'm only interested in eating vegan options. So have them point, point out the foods that are appropriate, um, ask them for a taste test, and hopefully you like it and then purchase the food either by the pound or maybe even two pounds if you really, really like it. And my last tip is for us to go visit a vegan restaurant. That's right, guys, a vegan restaurant. Now, maybe you don't even know that vegan restaurants exist. Well, I'm happy to let you know that they do. So in order to find one, all you have to do is go to Google and type in vegan restaurants near me. And in less than half of a second, Google will give you the appropriate results. Now, if you decide to go visit a vegan restaurant, do two things. Number one, let them know that Coach D sent you. And number two, be sure to order something that has brown rice in it. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, four tips to help make your nature day successful. All right. It's time for our question of the day, which comes from yours truly and the rest of the 23% nation. Why? Because we have inquiring minds. So we want to know which wild rice recipe do you prefer? Is it the first one, the second one, or maybe just maybe you know of a vegan wild rice recipe that you would like to share with us? So whether you want to take one of mine or share one of yours, please write your answer in the comment box below. 
Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I sign out, I got to ask you to please subscribe, like, and share the video, especially if you love wild rice. Also, don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. I'm signing out, but always remember to take care. God bless and never, ever forget that Coach D loves you.